Hi, thanks for joining me. This video is on aneroid barometers. The word aneroid comes from Greek, which means not wet or dry. In other words, there's no fluid. Uh, so compare that or contrast that with a mercury barometer where there is fluid and the aneroid has no fluid. What the aneroid does have, though, is a cell, a little aneroid cell that measures atmospheric pressure. The aneroid cell, or we also call it a capsule, is evacuated. In other words, there's a slight vacuum on the inside, and the diaphragm is able to move in and out, or flex, as a result of changes in atmospheric pressure. There's a spring that's attached to it that typically prevents it from collapsing. If it was a complete vacuum, then the aneroid would uh, just collapse together. But there's a little bit of a spring that prevents that collapsing. The aneroid typically is made of uh, two diaphragms that are welded together uh, or, or somehow bonded together. And as I said, there is a vacuum inside anywhere from one pascal to uh, up to uh, 7,000 pascals, which would be 70 millibars of pressure. So it's not very much pressure on the inside. Here's the equation for the aneroid barometer. Uh, the top equation shows um, the pressure is a function of the deflection of the diaphragm. And that's raised to the third power. So it looks, looks like a third order equation. If we take the derivative of that uh, and look at how the diaphragm changes with pressure, that gives us our static sensitivity. So the delta Y is the change in the deflection of the diaphragm center, and delta P is the change in pressure. So how much does the diaphragm flex with a certain change in pressure? And you can see that it's one over the flexing of the di uh, diaphragm plus some other constants. This means that it is not linear. It is a parabola, and that gets a little bit complicated. There have been some improvements that have been made to aneroid barometers. One is that if you're able to put several of these aneroids in series, in other words, stack them, then each deflection is magnified by the number of aneroids that you have, the aneroid capsules. So that increases the sensitivity, you get a bigger deflection. Then also, if the aneroid capsule, each side is corrugated, then that tends to increase the sensitivity, also its ruggedness, and also improve the linearity. Another thing that's done to uh, aneroid barometers is that uh, there are two charged capacitor plates that are put inside of an aneroid. And as the pressure changes, uh, these uh, capacitor plates move either together or farther apart. As a result, if they're charged, that changes the capacitance. So we can measure the change capacitance, and as a result, that gives us the pressure change or the pressure. These uh, capacitance uh, transducers uh, in the aneroid barometers have been used in radiosons for radioson ascents and also in airplanes for encoding altimeters. So let's look at some applications of aneroid barometers. Some applications have to do with surveying. Also, uh, they're used as altimeters for flight and then also they're used in barographs. Surveying um, requires very minute measures in changes of pressure to get different altitudes. Uh, so there's a company uh, that was uh, uh, in, uh, located in California in Los Angeles that uh, built very sensitive surveying altimeters. The company's name was Paulin, and they made these portable aneroid barometers that were carried by surveyors and geologists uh, in making maps and designing dams and other things like that. The resolution of these aneroid barometers was very good, down to a thousandth of an inch of mercury, 
and the display either gave inches of mercury or height in meters or feet. So these were used to uh, survey, or in other words, um, measure the height of uh, terrain features and other things above sea level or of above a certain datum. Another purpose for aneroid barometers is in airplanes. Uh, the altimeter, which tells you how high an airplane is above some pressure level and above some datum, um, uses aneroids. What the altimeter does, it's actually an aneroid barometer that measures atmospheric or static pressure. And then uh, through linkage, it displays the altitude above sea level. And this is designed to um, use the standard atmosphere in calculating the, um, the display, the altitude. The aneroid, uh, the aneroid in an altimeter has some problems. One of them is temperature, and we'll talk about that later on when we get to the errors of altimeters. But uh, the other thing is non-standard pressure. Of course, pressure changes in the atmosphere. That we have high pressure and low pressure systems. So to able to adjust for that, um, a, a gentleman named Paul Colesman back in 1927-28 got a patent for a sensitive altimeter where you could adjust the pressure level so that for non-standard pressure. And as a result, this window or this uh, adjustment is known as the Colesman window. And what we do is we put in the altimeter st setting in there. And we'll talk more about altimeter settings in another video. Another application of the aneroid barometer is the barograph. And what a barograph is, it's a recording aneroid barometer. And as you can see from the picture, there's a stack of aneroids that increases the deflection which is hooked up to a pen and some linkage. And as the aneroids expand and contract, uh, it actuates the pen. There's a pen with some ink. And then there's a rotating drum, which a chart is affixed to. And as a result, you can see the changes in pressure with time. That's very useful in helping identify uh, weather systems and also fronts when fronts move through. Let's talk about some of the errors of an aneroid barometer, and there's a few of them. Uh, we're going to go through the first one, exposure, and then we'll work our way through temperature, hysteresis, improper reading, and drift. So exposure errors are more or less the same errors that you have with mercury barometer. In other words, as the wind blows over a building, it reduces the pressure inside a building, and you'll be measuring um, lower pressure. So that's, that's a problem. Another problem with aneroid barometers is temperature changes. As the temperature changes, so does the pressure, and so does the instrument. Uh, the instrument contracts and expands with temperature. It's made of metals. So as a result, you get some errors there. And these are difficult cor to correct, but uh, literature that I've read said that typically these errors are less than a half millibar of pressure. Another more serious er uh, error is hysteresis. And what hysteresis is, it's uh, the value of a physical property that lags behind changes in the, uh, in the effect that causes it. In other words, as your uh, altimeter, as the pressure changes, the, the aneroid will change, but the aneroid changes more slowly than the pressure changes. And also it changes in the wrong direction uh, as, or in the opposite direction as the pressure reverses, the pressure change reverses. These errors are also known as elastic errors, and they're uh, non-uniform. Uh, they're really hard to anticipate. And as a result, you'll get different readings in pressure uh, when the pressure rises and falls. So when the true pressure goes back through the original or the true value, a true value, the uh, aneroid may uh, have a little bit of lag and not be reporting the correct pressure. Uh, this is seen in aircraft as aircraft climb and descend. Sometimes it's handy to tap on the altimeter. Uh, then the altimeter will kind of jump a little bit, maybe by 20 or 50 feet, and indicate the true altitude. And this has to do with uh, a little bit of friction in the linkage and also in the indicating needles. Other errors with aneroid barometers, of course, you may read the um, 
the display improperly, and that has to do also with maybe the resolution of the display, trying to interpolate and figure out what the true value of pressure is. And then finally, another error is the drift of the sensor. Over a period of time, the sensor uh, falls out of calibration. It's hard to predict and hard to detect, so uh, aneroid barometers need to be uh, recalibrated uh, frequently. Here's a comparison between mercury and aneroid barometers uh, showing the pluses and minuses, uh, good things and bad things, the pros and cons. With uh, mercury, mercury is a simple design, whereas aneroids are kind of more complex. You got springs and linkages and capsules and displays. Um, mercury barometers don't require calibration, but aneroids do. Um, mercury barometers require manual reading, but with aneroid, actually you can automate that and uh, have a, uh, an electric display. Mercury barometers are very difficult to transport. They're about uh, three feet long or one yard long, whereas aneroids are pretty much portable. Mercury barometers need to be kept vertical, whereas aneroids really don't require them to be kept vertical. Uh, they're insensitive to motion or orientation or even shock. Mercury barometers have a gravity correction, but aneroids don't. Uh, mercury barometers require temperature corrections, and aneroids do. They do have some errors with temperature, but they're hard to correct. Mercury barometers really don't have much hysteresis. Um, you know, the mercury might cling to the glass a little bit, but aneroids have uh, much more hysteresis. Mercury barometers, of course, are toxic whereas aneroids have no problem with that. And then one problem with aneroids is that they're not as accurate as mercury barometers. So that's a little bit about aneroid barometers. I hope you enjoyed this discussion.